Jimmy Womack has given the flowers uh, here on the altar. And then I have to tell you, I'm a little bit jealous because uh, I learned today that Mike Morrison has a fan club. And his fan club gave the beautiful flowers that are in the narthex, the foyer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Jackie and Maxine got, got those for him. So uh, I'm glad of your fan club. I will tell you, I do kind of have a fan club, but they bring me snickerdoodles. And so, so, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty cool with that too. Uh, we were lucky; any snickerdoodles even got passed out at Faith in Action. Uh, I kept making journeys to the kitchen just to see how things were going in there. You know, uh, it was good. Uh, for announcements, we thank any. There was a good crew that came yesterday that uh, that did work. Duke was our snake charmer. Take her care of her. How many snakes, Duke? Six. Six snakes that he took care of for us. And uh, you might see over on Carter's Corner, if you get a chance to look at that today, wow, it looks so much better. And their whole family did a wonderful job. You'll probably see some pictures that Gail will send out. That, that uh, But a lot of people were here working yesterday, but we appreciate Michael and Stacy and their girls uh, were here helping. And Duke was taking care of the snakes, so it was all good. We were in good hands, uh, and uh, but a lot of work was done. We appreciate everybody uh, who came and did that. Uh, 
Also to know that this Thursday we are going to be putting uh, candy in the Easter eggs. And so uh, you can either bring candy over these coming days or you could come and just bring it as you come to help. I'll have to tell you, we found some Easter eggs over in Carter's Corner, Carter's Corner but we didn't eat the candy that was inside. I wasn't, wasn't quite sure how long it might have been there, but those eggs were pretty well hidden over there. It could have been the snakes that kept the kids away. I don't know. But, uh, so sometimes you can find eggs years later, you know, from the, from the hiding. Uh, we need chaperone up in the balcony because I got uh, Chris and Meredith up there by themselves and I'm not sure you know, if anything goes wrong with the slides, you know they're not paying attention. But I have to tell you a funny moment on Meredith from this past week. Come on. Hey, do I, can I tell it or not? Thank you. On Wednesday night, she took the kids out of the gym across the street because it was a beautiful evening and uh, our yard guy just lost his name hadn't hadn't mowed that grass yet so the clover at some place got about knee deep okay so meredith was playing chase with the kids and it was one of them got to where they were chasing her and she ran out in that deep clover and tripped face first face plant but the thing that made it so funny is she just disappeared in the clover. I mean, all of a sudden, she was just gone. There was no more Meredith. And, of course, the kids got the biggest kick out of it ever. And uh, I love how she loves the kids, and I love how the kids love her. Uh, and I wish I'd have been filming that moment. It was a very classic. And we appreciate you, Meredith, and what you do with the kids, and that energy and that vulnerability and disappearing in the clover was an awesome, <laughs> awesome thing. It was glorious. Uh, next Sunday, we will have worship at 9 and at 11. That's kind of unusual on Palm Sunday. Sometimes we do one, but we're doing two. And we're putting the Easter egg hunt in the middle, like for Sunday school. So that'll be from 10 till, till in that time frame. Depends on when the preacher gets done preaching from the 9 o'clock service uh, to go out and do the Easter egg hunt uh, next Sunday. So that's Palm Sunday. Uh, and then on Easter Sunday... We're going to have three services on Easter Sunday. We'll have a service at 7 a.m., quote, a sunrise service, but it'll be in here. Then we will have a uh, 9 and 11. We'll also have services on, on Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday. And there'll be more information about coming about those. I have the privilege today of introducing to you uh, Jason and Stephanie Berglund. And Jason and Stephanie, if y'all will stand up. Jason is our new part-time youth pastor. So we want to welcome him today. And his awesome sidekick, Stephanie. Uh, Debbie and I have known them for a number of years. And who we're really missing is the dynamic Grayson. Uh, Grayson is two years old. And about one service is about all he can handle a day. And so uh, we miss Grayson in here. But uh, awesome uh, boy, Grayson. And so we welcome you and are so blessed that you're here to do ministry with us. It's awesome. Very good. Thank you. He's going he's gonna to preach. Yes, good God. He's going to preach on the sunrise service on that Sunday on the 4th. He will preach. And then I'm pushing him a little bit because we're also going to, he's going to preach on the 11th of April. He'll preach at 9 o'clock and at 11 so that everybody can kind of hear his heart. And, and uh, it, we're very blessed to have him here. Uh, so with those announcements going, candy on Thursday is big. That's really big. Snickerdoodles to the pastor. That's big. And... Uh, continuing to worship through our Easter time is going to be great. Easter lilies are available. Uh, deadline is coming up soon, so be mindful of that. Any other announcements we need to make today? We'll go with these. Let's continue in worship as we stand to worship the Lord in song. Hey, uh, let me do this. There, thank you. Call to worship because I like this as it reminds us that we're in a series about there's a river. There is a river. There is a river which flows from the throne of God. The river of God brings healing to the nations. The river of God is full of living water. When we believe in Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit, God's river flows from our hearts into the lost and hurting world. There, there is a river. Thanks be to God.
God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you shall come to judge the spirit of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. service where we share our joys and concerns with each other uh, and we have a lot of things going on but I'll put out there first what are some of our joys and our concerns today that we want to be mindful of certainly praying for Mike on Tuesday he has a procedure that he's going to be going in for so the flowers were well timed but Jackie said something about your birthday Happy birthday tomorrow and surgery too well what, what a way to celebrate huh <laughs> and you know how to party man you worry about it we're going to be praying for you on all fronts. But see, your fan club even knew it was your birthday. <laughs> my fan club said they didn't know it was my birthday. He <laughs> gave them in the loop. So we're praying for you this week. And we hope he's able to be back on Sunday. I'm still working. It's so good. You know, people are kind of coming back and more people come back trying to learn names. So uh, one of my blessings today was Ron and Sandra, like I'm. I got your names right now today. Right? So, uh, I messed it up when they came in. I apologize. That not mean you're loved any less. And let me tell you what, the people who count know your name. <laughs> Y'all are loved. And I'm still learning. Uh, but it's been a blessing too, having having as, as we're getting the people being able to come back and some others have said they're going to come back. Uh, another thing that to know that, that Friday we had the service for Rose Joe here. Uh, and it was a beautiful service. Well, wow. her daughter did a great job. Her granddaughter learned a lot of stuff about Rose. I waited, you know. Uh, I knew she was adventurous, but man, I heard learned some things where she was way more adventurous than I even knew. Uh, it, it, was, it was a great service that celebrated her life and uh, beautifully just in the church, how our church did that was really a glorious thing. So we're celebrating that today. Kenny Wellborn had a surgery this week. He's recuperating. Kathy Morris had surgery. She's waiting for some reports. Pat Evans crossed the way, received a diagnosis. We're going to really be keeping her in our prayers if you have to touch base with her. Uh, Nona Jordan, uh, Deborah Waters. Uh, Vanessa, who is here sometimes, has shown us some pictures of her grandfather. Man, they'll make you pray for her grandfather. He's had some cancer issues. And then uh, Jamie Kramer is needing rest, and he was here at 9 o'clock, and I pray to God renewed that. Some of you may know that uh, my dad, he was a pastor in the Methodist Church for a long number of years. He's 89 years old, but some things are going on with him where it really looks like he probably is in the just the final stages of things where maybe not even a week. And so when church is over today, I'll be driving to Georgetown, picking Debbie up, who's with her mom, celebrating her mom's birthday. But I'd really ask for prayers for my dad, Buddy Miller, but even more so for my mom. Uh, my dad is like ready to go. <clears throat> he has lived an awesome life. It's not a sad thing. It's just praying God's mercy. You know how it happens or what happens. And, and, and it's kind of a joyful thing. And yesterday I called and I was talking to my mom and my dad like, let me talk to that boy. And uh, <laughs> that was a, it was just a real blessing to get to have a conversation with him. And we're please just be praying for my mom and dad and what happens. Uh, Anything can happen, you know what I mean? He he can rebound all kind of stuff, uh, but we're just keeping him our prayers and appreciate you standing with us in that. Any other joys or concerns today? Don't forget Jody. Yes, thank you. Man, that, that's right. Because uh, Jody Rouse and his wife Sandy, he's been put in the hospice 
and he too kind of is a trajectory, probably not much different than my dad. So we're really keeping them in our prayers. Can't believe I forgot. But there's a there's a lot. Judy Henderson still in play. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. So please be mindful of these, and I trust that we really do keep them in our prayers. And I want you to know also our prayers matter too. Okay, um, uh, the prayer list is really pretty pretty long right now. So let's do that. With this in mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Okay. Father God, I thank you for the way you love us. You are an awesome, amazing God, that you're God of all creation, God of the whole universe, and yet you are concerned about the intricate details of our lives. You're concerned about our health, Father God, and we do have a number of health concerns within our congregation. And so, Lord, we're lifting up each one of these and asking for your love and your mercy, for your grace, Lord, in each of these situations. And help us to be a family of faith, just standing together, rejoicing with those who rejoice, mourning with those who mourn, and praying for those who may be going through times of sickness or struggle or getting things taken care of physically, Father God, uh, through different procedures. So, Lord Jesus, we stand together as brothers and sisters in Christ, and we pray for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we celebrate Jason and Stephanie coming on staff here with us at this church, and what a blessing. Lord, your provision in that and the work that you're going to do in our children. And we thank you for Meredith and, and just seeing her love for the children, the children's love for her. And then to bring Jason and Stephanie, Father God, thank you so much for uh, the great work Doug did for so many years. And now, Lord, just to step in and to keep the children and youth, Lord, focused on you and growing. We're trusting you to do a great work. Father God, in our children, in our youth, in the coming days, and for us to be a generational church, Lord, keep us mindful of that. Father God, we pray for our nation, we pray for our leaders, uh, we pray for a revival across our land, for spiritual renewal and spiritual awakening, and we would even pray, Lord, that that awakening and renewal can begin in us and with us, Father God, stir our hearts to love you more, to serve this world at deeper levels, Father God, in the name of Jesus that the river of your love and your mercy and your grace would flow through us to a lost and a hurting world, Father God. Pray now today that you will hear us as we pray, even as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This would normally be the time when the offering takes place. We're getting real close to thinking about doing that again. Probably get by Easter and revisit that. Uh, you notice the blue tape is gone. Uh, but what we're encouraging is that we still kind of practice social distancing and how we sit, what we do. Uh, and, you know, this week in the spring break, we're low. It's going to be more attendance in the coming weeks, just like Rose's funeral, but we were just almost full of us. So be mindful of that. But this will be the time when we do the offering. Uh, and you, those of us that are here, there's a basket in the back that we can give. Those watching online, we welcome you. We bless those watching online. You can give online or you can mail the check-in. We had our finance meeting you know, on Thursday night and just so thankful for our church and for the faithfulness, the stewardship, and that our church, Stacy Rock, actually do pretty decent. She's head of our finance committee and just doing, really doing pretty decent. So it's kind of fun to go from that meeting to get a report that we're doing okay to the ad board. But the way we're doing okay is because of your faithfulness. Uh, there was a, an older couple that came by the church this week because they're going to bring their tithe you know, to the church. They're, they're not comfortable yet coming back, but they have been faithful to bring their tithe and got to visit with them. And it just I know that blesses God's heart. You know what I mean? Just to want to be faithful uh, on that level. So I'm so thankful for that in this church. In giving thanks for the faithfulness of God's faithfulness to us and the faithfulness congregation, let's stand and join together in the doxology. <laughs>
Thank you, Chris. Good job getting there to that. Uh, so, so appreciate the guys. Uh, we were talking about what a challenging job that is because the only time people know is if you know, the little glitch and we didn't have that course and you got it up there, good. It was good. Good job. No doubt. Uh, I always have, I think standing together in prayer is a big deal. And one of my deals, I'm praying that you're back with us next Sunday. That everything just goes smooth, the recovery's good, and that you are leading next week. So, very good. That's what we're praying. I am definitely, I was thinking of that while we were doing that. Just wanted you to know, praying on that front. Amen. Oh man, it's a busy morning today. And so, in all the busyness, I did not reshuffle my notes. So I got to get my notes back in order and... Then I don't hardly go by them anyway today, so help him Jesus on all fronts, okay? All right. Uh, we're in a summer series, River of God's Love. Next Sunday will be our last Sunday on this. It's Palm Sunday. The River of God's Love leads to Jerusalem and to the cross. That's going to be our theme next Sunday. Then we'll have our Easter Sunday. Then Jason's going to preach on the 11th. Then on the 18th of April, we're going to start a new series called In Christ. And it'll be out of Ephesians and going through Ephesians. But a part of this is we've been going through this river of God's love. We've been reading the passages of Scripture from Psalm six, from Psalm forty six, uh, verse four, uh, and that reminds us that there is a river. It says, "There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High." And my prayer is for us to know there is a river. It flows from the throne of God. It flows through the temple. It flows to us. And when we put our faith in Jesus, that river can flow in us and through us. And then I've been going ahead and putting in this Ephesians 1, 3 to prepare us for when we get to that in Christ, because we want to look at our identity in Christ and all the riches of God's blessings that flow to us through Christ, through the cross of Calvary, through his resurrection. And Ephesians 1, 3 says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Say it with me. In Christ. Okay, and that's where we're going to be headed is understanding the river of God flows to us through Christ. And we're going to be looking at in Christ. That's the theme of Ephesians is in Christ. And we're going to be in Ephesians for a number of weeks, walking through some of the passages and studying Ephesians. Now we're going to do a Bible reading to scripture reading today from the gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter. But to prepare for this reading from the fifth chapter, I need to go back for just a minute and lay some groundwork out of the fourth chapter. Okay, in the fourth chapter, of gospel of Mark, we see Jesus and he is ministering to multitudes of people. So he's ministering to all these people and they've had a busy day. And then all of a sudden at the end of a busy day, Jesus looks at the disciples and says, Hey, we're going to the other side, the other side of the sea of Galilee. Okay. So in the evening, okay, get in the boat. Jesus has had a busy day. Jesus falls asleep in the bow of the boat. And he must have had a really hard day because he's sleeping when the storm is so bad. What, what, was, what were Jesus, most of Jesus' disciples, what were most of them before they started following Jesus? Fishermen. Don't you think they had probably spent some time out on the lake? Don't you think they had probably experienced some storms? Well, this storm must have been really bad because the disciples get panicked. They're in fear and they think the boat is going to sink. And so they're so scared they wake Jesus up. Jesus wakes up, steps up and says to the storm, peace, be still. And everything grows quiet. The apostles grow quiet because they've seen a lot of things, but they hadn't seen anything like that. I, I would love to take a little extra time, but I'm already going to be pushing it here, okay? Uh, but I'd love to take some extra time to talk about, like, sometimes when you're going out in ministry. There was a time I was going to go to Costa Rica, and you cannot believe, just to say, all hell broke loose about 4 o'clock on the afternoon before I was supposed to go. And you can't even believe all the things that took place to where, like, I'm like, God... If this is what it means to, like, to go in ministry, then I don't even know if I'm ready because this is way too bad you know, uh, to the skunk that was dead under the house. You know, that was one of the things. And I'm fixing to leave to go out of town the next day. 
you know a skunk dying on your house is not a cool thing, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, glory to God. But just one of numerous things that took place. And so they're going to do ministry and they hit this storm and Jesus, Jesus calms the storm. And so then we pick up on Mark 5, verse 1. It says, then they came to the other side of the sea. You know, sometimes like you just could read that, but they've been through one of the worst storms they thought they were going to die. So coming to the other side, it probably felt pretty good just to climb out of the boat. You know what I'm talking about? Just to put, you know, just to put your foot on the ground. They came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, what does that mean? A man with an unclean spirit. What does that mean? Demon possessed. That there was a, it was a guy, he was demon possessed. Okay? And so there was a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone come to him, neither could anyone tame him, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and catching him and cutting himself with stones. I have to tell you that you can read some liberal, uh, you can read some liberal commentaries on this, okay? And here, here's one of the liberal commentaries, all right? It's like, you know, we know that nobody's really demon-possessed, but this was the outlook of the first century disciples, so it, through that outlook, they were interpreting the events of what was going on, because we know that nobody's really demon-possessed. And, and that actually the, the, the pigs didn't like, you know, the demons didn't go in the pigs and the pigs run off the cliff because, you know, that we're too smart. We know better than that. OK, but what actually happened because of Jesus and his encountering the men and the disciples getting out of the boat, it freaked the 200 pigs out. And so the herd of pigs ran over the cliff just because they were scared of the crowd. Liberal commentary on this verse. Hello. What do you believe? Okay. So when this guy saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. How about that? And he cried out with a loud voice and he said, what, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of God, the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Did you expect that from a demon-possessed guy? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Just ran right to Jesus and fell at his feet and acknowledged who Jesus was, like worshipped him. But Jesus said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. And then he asked him, and it's curious to say, ask him, who's he asking? Because <laughs> he asked him, what's your name? And, and he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. That's when you like take a couple of steps back. <laughs> like, okay, whoa, man. My name is Legion, for we are many. And uh, he also begged Jesus earnestly that Jesus would not send them out of the country. So now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountain. So all the demons begged him, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission, who had the authority. And at once Jesus gave them permission. And then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned into the sea. And so those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see uh, what it was that had happened. And then they came to Jesus, and they saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And all those who saw it told them how it happened to him and how he had been demon-possessed and about the swine. And they began to plead with Jesus to depart from their region. And when he got into the, isn't that strange? You know, the demon-possessed guy runs and worships him, and then all everybody else is like, hey, man, you need to go. <laughs> God, we do weird stuff. And so Jesus got into the boat, and he had been demon-possessed, begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him, and all marveled. 
So, 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 you know, this happens, and then the guy wants to go with Jesus, but Jesus tells him no, because, because the guy is going to have a ministry just by walking around. He just walks around, everybody like, ooh, that, that's that guy, you know? And so he's going to have amazing ministry, just walks around. Hey, at the 9 o'clock service, had a young man who I've known for a number of years. He now lives in Arkansas, and he came at 9 o'clock, and, and he and his wife were married in this church. And, and so he, when he heard I was pastor, he thought he just had to come. But it's really awesome, too, because he grew up in Chicago in gangs. And his life, he's been married like for 14 years, has four boys. And his life is just a testimony to the glory of God. Because, like, you know, there's not his friends aren't doing so good. But because of Jesus, his life is at a whole different place. That was a cool thing. So here you go. Today, I'm going to tell you some weird stuff, okay? This is kind of weird scripture, isn't it? And I'm fixing to tell you some weird stuff. Story, two stories out of my life actually happened and are going to be weird. But what I need you when we're done and you're going home, not to be thinking how weird it was, which you will, but not just that. But I need you to think, what was the point? Okay. And the point is, 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 is our prayer lives and our being in tuned spiritually to what's going on. Okay. Our prayer lives and us being in tune spiritually to what's going on. That's what I want you to remember when we're done, okay? All right. Now, weird stories. Weird story number one. I'm in my mid-20s, maybe, you know, late, not, you know, 20, 25, 27, somewhere in there. And I get invited to go preach at this really awesome church that's really growing. And it's an amazing church. And at my age, I get invited to go preach there. I'm some kind of excited, okay? When I get there, I'm even more excited because they're meeting in a gym. And the, the lectern is at center court in the basketball court. No, no, you can't. You didn't know me when I was younger, but I've always loved basketball and playing basketball. Now I just carry my basketball around with me, you know. But but and so it's hard for you to picture, you know. But I actually was a pretty decent point guard and all that. Love basketball. So now I'm getting to preach this awesome church. The lectern's at center court. The church kind of wraps around you, you know. And it was awesome. And so the early service, great service, good ministry. It was really an excellent time. And so then there's Sunday school hour. Debbie and I are milling around. And then for the, the late service, whatever time it was late, we were sitting up on the front row. And all of a sudden I had this thought. And it's weird how you have thoughts. You know, I had this thought. I'm like, you know, I'm the only pastor here. Because the other pastor had gone. He was asking me to fill in for him. And I thought, I'm the only pastor here. So my thought was, like, man, if somebody comes to be baptized, I mean, I guess me being the only pastor here, I could baptize them or something. I mean, like, what would I do? So I'm thinking, like, I'm the only pastor here. And then all of a sudden, about five rows behind me, and I'm not trying to scare you, so be ready, be prepared. About five rows behind me, I hear, I I had never heard a demon-possessed person up to that point. But let me tell you what. There was not one moment I thought, what is that? From the very first deal, the dude was growling. And I'm like, that dude is demon-possessed. And I had just thought, I'm the only pastor. So if somebody's demon-possessed, come to the church. Who's supposed to take care of it? I want you to know there's moments in life when your prayer life can just like grow like multitudes in one single moment. And in that moment, my prayer life is growing because I am fairly confident that I am not ready to turn around and deal with this dude that's demon possessed. And so I just have this moment. I'm praying. He's growling. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm the only pastor here. Lord, help me. I'm going to have to turn around and deal with this dude. And so, so with him growling, all of a sudden I turn around, you know, thinking I'm fixing to have to go deal with this. And as I turn around, there's four dudes like gushers walking down the aisle coming toward him. And they seem more comfortable with it than I did. So I'm just going to see what happens for a minute. And so they walk up and one of them walks up to him. And he goes, in the name of Jesus, I tell you to be quiet. And immediately the dude is quiet, quits growling. And then it was so cool because the guy came up on the other side and said, hello, my name is whatever his name was. He said, we're so glad you're visiting with us today. It's so wonderful that you're here. We're wanting to maybe visit a little bit more and get to know you. How about you come with us and go to the library and we'll talk through what's going on. 
thank you, Jesus. I mean, you never, there's nobody ever been so thankful in all their life as I was in that moment. You with me, church? Hallelujah. I mean, those, he got up and went with those guys. They went off to the library. I asked them how it went after church. They said it was pretty intense, but he came to the right place. I'm like, hallelujah. I'm glad y'all are here because it had just been on me. I'm not sure, okay? So, wow. All right. That's weird story number one, okay? Now we're going to go to weird story number two, okay? Weird story number two is in about 2015, so six, about six years ago. I'm 55 or so years old, and we're in Guatemala, okay? We're at, we're at this awesome church in Guatemala, Iglesia Matishama, and I've been going there for a, no, for a number of years and doing ministry there, and God's doing great things. It's an awesome church. We also bring with us some young people from Costa Rica, and they come with us there to Guatemala. One of those young people is a young lady named Gretel Torres. Uh, I'd known Gretel since she was 16. She would have been about 27 or 28. You know, so it was funny because similar to her, she would have been about at the age I was many years before, uh, and, and Gretel is like my translator. I mean, man, she, the girl is awesome, and she can preach, too. And so, like, I don't even know if she's preaching the same thing I am, you know, like I'm speaking, and she's, but they're really getting into whatever she's saying. So, like, she's an awesome preacher. So she translates, and, and we preach, and God, God does stuff. But so on this service, right before the service, it's about to start, and usually Gretel's already right beside me. Gretel has met a young woman named Priscilla. They're probably about the same age. Priscilla has a one-year-old daughter named Daniela, and, and I've learned that Priscilla's marriage is not in a good place, that her husband Daniel is especially in a really dark place and that that's going on with Priscilla and so we've been praying for Pris Priscilla with her husband Daniel and and so so when Gretel's not with me I'm kind of freaking out like man where's where's Gretel and and then Gretel comes up uh, Gretel comes up right before the service and she goes we're so excited Priscilla's husband Daniel is here we're so excited she can't even believe that he would even come to church but he's here and and so she's looking forward to you meeting him when church is over so so it, we're excited that Daniel's here and I'm like okay glory to God you know but got to preach and stuff first so we have our worship and it's good it goes on we get up and preach preach and and after I preach we set things off in ministry I pray for us here at First Gladewater that we'll learn more about ministry like doing ministry here at the altar, praying and, you know, a little bit interacting, praying for each other, praying for the people that God sends. And so, so we did, we preached, we set up ministry, ministry was going. I handed the ministry off to Pastor Abdiel Lopez. He was the pastor of the church. And I think it's better for the pastor to lead the worship. He knows kind of how he wants it to go and what works and what doesn't. So he's leading it. And as Gretel and I are walking off the platform, she says, hey, let's go meet Daniel. And I'm kind of like, now? I mean, like, you know, it's weird because ministry's going on. I thought we said, like, after the service, you know, like, after the service. Like, so now? And she's like, yeah, let's go meet him now. And so, okay, let's go meet him. So, like, a little dad being led by his daughter, you know, I'm following her. We go down, and, and Daniel's sitting. And I, I, I can remember, man, I can remember. All of a sudden, my eyes met with Daniel's eyes. And I have never seen such desperation. I'm talking desperation that was the word I mean I wasn't thinking demon possessed I wasn't thinking anything I was just desperation in his eyes and so my Spanish is really bad really bad muy malo and then I so what walk up to Daniel uh, como esta Daniel mi nombre es Pastor Milo como te llamo you know and and he grabs my hand and and he pulls me over the pew to hug him and uh I don't know if any of y'all have seen Elf. It's a, it's a funny movie, but there's a part in Elf where it's like, you look like you need a hug. <laughs> and, and so like, you know, he pulls me down for a hug. Like, oh, it looks like you need a hug. So he pulls me down and he pulls me and then he wraps the other arm around me, like grabs me. Man, I'm all bent over. Like, I mean, I'm like, Yo, how do, hey, nice to meet you, Daniel. Like my, my mouth is like right in his ear, you know, and it is awkward. And he is holding on. He is holding on. 
And so like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm going to pray for Daniel, you know. So, I'm, I mean, in Daniel, I know he doesn't speak English. I know I don't speak Spanish. So I start praying. Oh, God bless Daniel, you know, bless his life. Lord, pray for his marriage to Priscilla. Just pray for him as a father to his little daughter, Daniel. Lord, I pray that you, you know what's going on in Daniel's life. And I pray that you'll just release your Holy Spirit. And sometimes you kind of prime the pump and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit starts, you know, showing up and leading you in your prayer and kind of I felt the spirit kind of come on me so uh, all of a sudden out of the words out of my mouth oh Lord I just pray that you'll cleanse Daniel by the blood of Jesus I pray that you'll cleanse Daniel and when I said that and I mean right in my ear right in my deal and I'm locked in here and I'm like okay now we know what's going on here and 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 so like I, I keep praying but the Holy Spirit's working because, because here's what's awesome in this moment. I got some other people with me, okay? So I don't have to do this all on my own. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit starts guiding me. So I, I mean, I pull myself kind of apart from Daniel. I tell a person, I said, you need to go. And I named the three people I needed to come be with me because I don't have to fight this by myself, okay? Go get these three people, bring them. I said, you need to bring this translator. Greta was already there, but you need to bring this other person because I need one person translating to Daniel because I need Daniel understanding what I'm saying because I got a real feeling Daniel doesn't even hardly know what's going on. You know what I mean? And I need somebody like talking to Priscilla and having and Priscilla praying. I need Priscilla understanding what's going on. And so I'd call a timeout in the middle of that for a moment and call timeout, you know, ding, timeout. See what's going on. Timeout. Go get Craig, Tony, go get blah, 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 these people, bring them up here. Go get this person to translate to her. You're going to translate to him. And, and we get everybody set and we go back. Blood of Jesus, authority of Christ. You have no authority. You have no place here. You leave in Jesus' name and authority and power of Jesus. And I mean, it's own. Now, you got to picture this because Pastor Abdiel's up at the front. There's about three or 400 people there, and, and he's trying to have ministry time. But now we got this guy growling in the middle of the church, and there's kind of a ground crowd gathering around. So can you imagine how this is going? You know, everybody's like, ooh, dude, like what's going on there? You know, Pastor Bud's weird and something weird's going on, you know. So, yeah, you know, it's happening in this church trying to still have worship ministry stuff but this is going on everybody's kind of watching and it's on right there it goes on for a few minutes I don't know I'm trying to be led by the Holy Spirit go in the moment until till I've read about these things okay and so I know a little bit about some things but read about these so all of a sudden in, in that moment all of a sudden he <sighs> like that and he just collapses down you know into his own lap he collapses down folds over and uh, the breath just goes out of him, and I've read about this, and, and you, just, you just thought he had died. And, and I mean, you can scared for a minute, uh-oh, what'd we do? You know, what'd we do? Uh, but you can tell he's breathing. Man, he's sweating. He's exhausted. We're all kind of sweating, but him especially. Finally, a minute or two later, we we're able to set him back, you know, set him up, get him up, you know, set him back up. And, and I can just remember looking in his eyes, and seeing the relief that was in his eyes. And, and it was just all of a sudden before they, they'd been so desperate, so bloodshot, so just help me. And now you can really see there's a peace in his eyes. And he, you know, like almost like done no idea what happened, but, you know, man. And, and it was amazing. So it was amazing. So. When that's all done later, you know, I get home and you're praying through, wow, what just happened? You know, what just happened? And, and, and God, what do you want me to learn from this? And, and, and so I'm praying. And what I can really remember is looking at his desperation and seeing that desperation as I was walking toward him, but not understand it, just seeing the desperation, okay? I'm going to go back to Jesus for a minute. Jesus is ministering to the multitudes and, and all of a sudden Jesus says, hey, we need to go to the other side of the lake. And he goes to the other side of the lake and how many people does he minister to on the other side of the lake? Basically one. Some other people come around, there's some other things happen, but basically he ministers to one person. And after ministering to one person, he says, okay, let's get back in the boat and go to the other side of the lake. Does that seem weird? Okay, hey, here's what I'm telling you. Somebody was praying. Can I tell you that? 
somebody was praying. Either this guy had a mom or a grandmom that was praying for him. Or maybe the way demon possession kind of works is, 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 and I'm not saying I'm the expert on it by far, praise God, you know, like on that, but, but, but like these people have moments of clarity, like kind of, but, but they know they're scared in those moments of clarity, just like him sitting there, you know, him being there is a moment of clarity, but he knows he's desperate because they can come back and then you lose control and it goes to a different level. And so maybe this guy, Legion, and I don't think that was his name, that was their name, uh, but maybe maybe in those moments of clarity, he was crying out. And don't you imagine that he was desperate? Hello, church? Church, what I want you to connect with in anything in this story is I want you to connect, let's say, with legions, desperation. Don't you think he was desperate? Daniel, when he was sitting in that pew and I was walking toward him, I didn't understand at that moment what was going on. But when I looked at his eyes, what I saw was he was desperate. And somebody was praying to the extent that Jesus, Jesus, because he prayed, connected to the Spirit, he heard that desperate prayer. And all of a sudden, even after a busy day of ministry, guys, we got to get in the boat and go to the other side because I got a really desperate situation that I need to deal with. Okay? You may be praying for somebody, and, and it may be your son, your grandson, it may be somebody you don't even know, but, 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 but when you cry out to God, I want you to know that God hears. God hears. And out of your desperate cries, God can line something up where He sends somebody who can go and connect to them. And bring them the love, the grace, the mercy. I'm not, we're not just talking, I'm not, now I'm not talking de always demon possession. I'm talking about whatever the person needs that he can send somebody to them that can come and meet and connect with them and bring them the grace and the mercy that they need. Are you with me, church? So you may be crying out for somebody. You may have never done that before, but God may be leading you in prayer to learn how to cry out for other people for the mercy of God to come to them because you understand that desperation. And, and somebody was praying and it touched Jesus' heart in his, and he knew the desperation. So he left the multitudes to go through a storm to get to the other side to minister to that one. But I also need to tell you, church, that God may be preparing you or me to be the one that he sends to go minister to the person that somebody's praying for. I want to tell you, when I was in college, I was learning to do devotionals on a more regular basis, my Bible reading, my prayer time. And there was a time when I thought my Bible reading, my prayer time was just for me. Okay, And when I did that, my Bible reading was real sporadic. My faithfulness was kind of sporadic. But what God did is he put me in a couple of ministry situations where, where I wasn't enough. And, and where, where, where I really wasn't effective in ministry because I wasn't prepared for the moment. I can tell you that when I was 25, 27 years old, in that first moment with that guy five rows behind me, I wasn't ready for that moment. And I knew it. And my prayer in that next minute was telling God, I'm not ready for this moment. And, and in college, as I started realizing that by my, me being faithful in my prayer times and my Bible reading and those things, those help prepare me for the moments that God might have for me to be in ministry, to represent Him well. Just like going to Costa Rica, going to Guatemala, neither. The last thing Costa Rica or Guatemala need is Bud Miller showing up. National crisis. But what it needs is people that love Jesus, that are trying to walk in His love and His grace so that God can send His people to the various different situations and circumstances to bring His love and His grace to let the river of God flow into desperate situations. And so your Bible reading, your prayer times, you, you are preparing yourself to be an instrument, a vessel of God's river of love where God may need it. I want to tell you that one of the things God wants to do is to prepare us here at First Methodist Church Gladewater to be the place where He can send desperate people. 
and and so that so that whatever they walk in with we're not freaking out you know about whatever but that instead we're ready to love that person with God's love and that we have prepared ourselves so that so that we're in a place where God's river of love and grace can flow through us to the people that God would send us and then God will send us out. And then here's another thing. When we pray and when, when we're spending time with the Lord, we, we, we sensitize ourselves to the desperation around us. So, so that all of a sudden as we, we may see things that we wouldn't have otherwise seen, like in our own eyes, with our own perception, but all of a sudden we're in some place and we realize Wow, there's a, there's a desperate situation. And either just to pray for it. I, I still, one of the things that I think about as walking through Walmart, I was a youth pastor of, of a church with a large youth group. And several of our young women were struggling with eating disorders. And so I had been reading and studying about eating disorders. And, you know, I, I kind of had thought we'd just stop, you know. But reading about eating disorders, you, lo you learn how it's an addiction and, and it gets beyond them. Just They can't just stop. Now, now it's like an addictive behavior and they're going to need intervention in order to stop. And I was going in Walmart and this mother was walking next to her daughter. And I, I, you know, I, I could pick up this thing right here. I would, I'd rather have a pencil. But her daughter... <laughs> Walking next to her looked just like that. It was walking bones. And it screamed eating disorder. You don't get like that except by an eating disorder. And it was so difficult to know what to do because everything within me wanted to ask the mom, you are getting her help, right? Because many times parents don't know what's going on and they don't understand, you know, because the, it's a, they, they hide the behavior and nobody can know. But you need to be able to recognize the signs. And, and, and you also, when they get to the place where that girl is, they are getting in serious, serious danger where they even may, may need medical attention to help them turn the thing around because the body starts eating itself, all kind of stuff. But, but seeing that, my heart was crying out and to know what to do. And, and I felt like I was butting into somebody's business. To this day, I don't know if I did the right thing. I just said a prayer like for the mom. mom help that mom understand what's going on with her daughter. And sometimes just even knowing can be a challenge, you know, to what to do. Did I do the right thing? I, to this day, I wonder, did I do the right thing? Because that young lady, if there was not intervention, it was, she was fixing to go into a very difficult physical situation. She obviously was already in a, you know, emotional stuff going on, different things. But to become aware of the desperation that's around us, even to pray, or if by God's Spirit, like if God had really prompted me to say something to the mom more strongly than he did, I still don't know if I did the right thing in that moment. But, but that's the challenge sometimes, when you become aware of the desperation of knowing exactly what to do. We live in a desperate world. There is desperation all around us. But so many times we're just focusing on our own deal and our own stuff and we're doing good just to you know, make it ourselves maybe sometimes. But, but I'm telling this, here's, here's, the, here's the point, not the crazy stuff. This, these stories, please bear with me, these stories are not all about demon possession and all that, okay? That's how God taught me a lesson because when I looked at Daniel to see the desperation in his eyes, and, and for me to know, I want to I live more aware of what's going on in the world. And I want to be able to bring God's love and God's grace into people's desperation. You with me, church? And I want to be a part of a church body that's pressing into God, that's praying, that's in the Word, that understands the authority that we have in Christ so that when God shows us desperate people, brings us desperate people, we know in the authority and the power and the love of Jesus, we are equipped to help make a difference into those situations. Amen? Amen? Okay. So, yeah, weird stories. Only one person left during church. Only one. So that's good. Hopefully he'll come back.
somebody else may we'll wait until it's over and we're leaving and never come back. I don't know. I'm not trying to be weird in the in the stories I told. Did we read about a demon possessed man today out of scripture? And and what I'm telling you is, I mean that it's still the stuff is still out there. It's not like but that's not the first century mindset of the disciples. But I'm not telling us to be ready for God to send us demon possessed people. I don't think we're ready for that now. And you know, hold on on that one, Lord. Wait, give us a little time. But but there are desperate people. And we want to, God to know he can send them to us and we're ready to love them and minister to them. Or God may send us out and begin to draw our attention to different desperate situations. And instead of us being afraid of them or not knowing what to do, we have the power, the authority, and the love of Christ to make a difference in those situations. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would speak by your Holy Spirit. I know covered this in a unique way but but father god it's one of the ways that you brought it to me about recognizing desperation and lord i'm desperate for jesus every day i'm desperate for jesus and and then to know how to minister into that desperation uh, and lord we live in a world where there is desperation all around us Give us eyes to see, hearts to have compassion and to respond compassionately, Father God. To recognize it and to know that you drew our attention to it and that you will use us to make a difference. Guide our steps, Lord, even to in bringing people to us, Father God. We know that that can happen as well and prepare us, make us ready. In Jesus' holy, powerful name, amen. We're going to close by joining together and standing to sing praise to our God.
so just pray God's grace over each one of us that as we go, we would represent the Lord, that we would have eyes of faith, that we see the desperation around us, not be intimidated by it, but to know that we are equipped in Christ to be uh, to take Jesus and His love and grace to the world, praying for prayers and praying for people. Uh, your prayers matter, and, and God hears our prayer. So be blessed as you go today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.